Hello everyone and welcome to the Intellectual Property Office Overview of Intellectual Property. In the next 20 to 30 minutes, we're going to run through the differences between the intellectual property rights, including copyrights, patents, designs and trademarks, all governed by the Intellectual Property Office based in Newport in South Wales. My name is Emma Richards and I'm the Business Engagement Manager at the Intellectual Property Office. My role is to promote intellectual property and guide people along the process, explaining the differences between each of the rights. So in this seminar, I'm going to go through each of the rights um, in a very short overview, including trademarks, copyright, patents and registered designs. So firstly, I'm going to start by explaining uh, trademarks to you. Trademarks um, are brand names, logos, colours, domain names, slogans, shape themes, actions and music. Basically, it's an overall term for anything you want to protect in your business that you consider to be part of your branding and your image. There is a criteria in which you are expected to adhere to when you apply for a trademark, and that is it must be distinctive and not descriptive of the goods and services that you want to protect it for. So if we look at some of the examples on the side of the screen, orange is quite distinctive for EasyJet, for airlines, and it's also used for another company as well. Um, for mobile telephones. The reason why they can both have a similar kind of shade is because they're in a different area of industry. So when you apply for a trademark, you need to be aware of the fact that you need to be quite different from your competitors. So try not to use similar words or descriptive words within your industry. You'll be assigned a trademark examiner when you apply for your trademark and your trademark examiner will be searching whether your application is distinctive, so the words or text or pictures that you want to protect as your trademark are non-descriptive in your particular industry. If we find that there is a similar trademark that already exists, we will contact the earlier trademark holder and make them aware of the fact that you're going to be applying for something similar. The responsibility then is on the earlier rights holder to either object to your mark or to simply allow you to apply for it um, and then you can um, coexist alongside each other. But to prevent this kind of mistake happening, you can take advantage of our search facility, which is a free service on our website. You can search the register for earlier trademarks to establish whether there's another company similar to yours with similar goods and services with a similar trademark. This is going to avoid any expensive mistakes and any problems that you may come across in the future. And also be aware of the fact that if your trademark is refused by us, it's a non-refundable fee. So the fee that you're paying will not be refunded in the event of your trademark application being unsuccessful. And the cost for a trademark in the UK is £170. This is an application fee that includes one classification of goods and services. A classification is basically a category in which your company is categorised under. So if you've got a small company, you may be selling a number of items that may be classified in a couple of classes. So one, classes would, one class would be included in the application fee and additional classes then will cost you an additional £50 per additional class. If your application is successful, there's no need to pay an, any other fee until the 10 year anniversary of your um, trademark, by, where, by which time you will renew your trademark for the same fee that you paid for it in, in the initial application. 
If you'd like to expand um, your business overseas and wish to gain protection in Europe or um, further countries, there are options available in which you can do that. To have a European trademark, it will cost you 850 euros for up to three classes. And the World Intellectual Property Office, an office based in Geneva, uses a protocol called the Madrid system. Through this system, with one application, you can designate a number of countries in which you want protection in. It's quite a simple way of applying for a number of countries because you use one application and it's all um, applied for in one language. So there's no need to pay for additional translations. So moving on to the next intellectual property right that I'm going to discuss with you, and that is uh, copyright. Copyright is an automatic right. There is no official register for copyright within the UK. So as soon as you create copyright, it belongs to the person that created it. And copyright protects a number of um, work. It's creative work and artistic work. So under that heading, you can protect uh, things that are automatically protected are things like books, films, music, songs and sound recordings, photographs, paintings, manuals and databases. Under this heading, uh, creative work like websites and apps would also be included in automatic copyright rights. Software is also included. So the, the problems that you will incur with copyright is usually who owns copyright. Because it's an automatic right and there's no official register for it, it's quite difficult to establish who the owner is initially. Usually copyright is owned by the first creator or the author. Unless you're employed to create copyright within the course of your employment, and in this situation, the employer will automatically own that work. If you're a contractor, though, you do maintain ownership unless there's a contract that states otherwise. So if you're a small business and you're contracting someone into a piece of work for you, maybe they're creating an app or a website, bear in mind that as a contractor, they're not employed by the company, they'll still maintain ownership over their copyright. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, obviously, welcome to the photography show as well. I um, hope you enjoyed and you took a lot from that uh, copyright presentation then. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to um, to pop them in the, the question box and I'll do my best to answer them. If there's any questions that I can't uh, give you a full answer or, or get an answer to today, then um, I will, of course, endeavour to get back to you within the next 48 hours. Um, with a full answer. So just as a reminder, of course, in the UK, um, copyright uh, is an automatic right. So th there is no official uh, register uh, in the UK as it stands. Um, in other territories, such as uh, the US, they do have a copyright register. Um, and I believe one or two other countries do too. Um, but in the UK, it's currently, uh, we don't have an official register. Of course, there are unofficial uh, bodies such as PRS for music um, who uh, are a good um, go-to when it comes to protecting your copyright but there is no official register with the UK IPO so yeah so um, we just had a question coming in asking if this would be recorded um, and, uh, and my colleague Sophie's answered but just to remind that this session will be um, recorded and available um, on demand soon um, so if anyone uh, has had to jump off or missed it for whatever reason, you will still get a chance to see it. Uh, so, OK, question um, from Matt Walker there and how far could the term copy go? So if I saw a video on YouTube or saw an image in a book, if I took a similar picture using the same technique, would it be copying? Um, if you took a picture um, yourself, and then that is not copying. However, if you took a picture of somebody else's uh, picture, even though that would be a new image, um, in essence, you would still be copying 
that particular image so that would be copying um, anything you take from anything whether it be the internet there is a common misconception if you find an, an image on the internet that it's actually free to use because it's on the internet and that's not the case um, copyright still exists um, <clears throat> and therefore anything that you take any picture anything um, and especially if you make money um, then yes it's uh, it is it is copying and um, uh, the copyright owner can uh, ask for money um, as you've used their image and made money from it <clears throat> okay so uh, Christian Rogers has come in and asked uh, what's the best way to protect your images on posted on social media so we have to actually be careful um, when posting images on social media uh, for example, Facebook actually own your images the moment you post them onto their platform. This is all in the contract that everybody has signed when we first sign up to Facebook, when we first sign up to Instagram. Uh, it's the one where we usually give a quick scroll and click yes on the bottom and there is a section on IP. This uh, It does state in there about the ownership of any images so the moment they go on to the platform they are owned by that social media company and um, the way to get around this because of course social media is such a powerful tool especially uh, for photographers or if you or anyone wanted to get their images out there you can um, put a watermarked image on there um, of course this doesn't really uh, truly show um, the quality of the work um, how, so in therefore you can the, or the best way we say is to put a link potentially to your website um, and therefore it would it, it you know they get, people can click the link and then go directly to your uh, your photos okay so Tony Palmer I may I make music videos the copyright for the visuals is mine the audio however belongs to the artist recording studio what contact is needed to share the videos on my own socials uh, so it would be a case of getting think getting in touch with um, the artist recording the studio um, and and and, and to making an agreement really uh, before posting any of the videos just to make sure that everyone is on the on the same page and happy um, going forward so uh, you know um, <clears throat> uh, just a, a contract really a signed contract that you're both happy with both parties are happy with um, and, and before going forward and then at least when when these videos are released um, there's no comebacks there's no um, certainly no bad blood between the two parties and everyone's clear on uh, on who owns what and how it, how it's split uh, Colin Smith sorry I missed that can you cover the metadata in photographs um, uh, if I'm totally honest with you there Colin I actually am um, that is not my my area but I would be more than happy to get that I get a solid answer back to you within the next 48 hours um, my apologies on that okay Charlotte Wilson how does copyright work with selling imagery both when you've been contracted to take the photographs and when someone wants to use photographs you've taken <clears throat> uh, so copyright as I said copyright uh, is, 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 is the um, is you you own your copyright the moment you take that photograph no matter if someone's employed you to take that photograph they will um they would need to be a contract signed at the beginning uh, of your work agreement to state that whatever i whatever work you do the ip would automatically be transferred back to the um the employer regardless of that employer paying you or even if it's a one-off regardless of you being paid for that work you would own the contract um so both on even contract so yeah so as i said so that would have to be a contract that would be a, so assigning the ip over um and then when someone wants photographs you've taken they have to ask your permission there you can um either sell your image you can sell the copyright to them um you can rent can rent these images to them if they wanted to use them specifically if they wanted to use them in certain areas or um, the amount of times you can actually rent um, them to them for a fee of absolutely your choice but you have to be contacted and have to be asked 
Um, and as always, when it comes to these kind of things, I would say to have it in writing, have it in a contract, um, just so everybody's clear. And of course, then you've got something uh, solid in black and white uh, to go back to if need be. So Renata's asking about uh, some photographs on social media and how you can control them. Um, it's a difficult one, uh, Renata, based on the fact that social media is such a huge, powerful tool. Um, and, and as we all know, once uh, once a photo is on on the internet, it's 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 there forever. Um, again, I'll go back to. Um, potentially posting a link to your website uh, so it directs them straight to you. Um, if someone is using your images, um, contact them, uh, obviously, um, in a, a, a polite and friendly manner and, and, and tell them that they, these are your images and either that, um, you know, to stop using them or, or to potentially, if they were to use them in the future or continue to use them, then there would be um, a fee for that use okay charlotte gale if you create something in the uk and put it in your website portfolio but it is stolen by someone in a different country what are the rules between territories well that's a tough one um that is charlotte based on the fact that different countries have uh, different rulings um so you would have to contact uh direct to the ip office in said country um i'm afraid that's not such a straightforward answer or um, for you to do, but that is the case. Each country is different, slightly different when it comes to these um, uh, uh, the copyright rules. Of course, we a lot of countries signed up to the um, Berne Convention, which is the copyright laws. So you you may find that then they're, they're not too far from each other. And the fact is, if someone's taken your work, then it would still be the case. That the same as what we you know in the UK is that um, obviously you can ask them to stop. Ask them to take it down, whatever they, however they're using it, or again, um, the, if they've made money from it, then of course the, the, uh, some of that money may be owed to you. Okay, so John Payne, if you work with athletes and have a shot which would make an interesting print, do you need do you need the talent to sign a release, or as the photographer own all IP? So, generally speaking, there, John, yes, photographers own um, all the IP. Um, but of course, th then there's image rights come into that, um, and of course, um, privacy, uh, privacy, p uh, human privacy in the UK. Um, so, yes, yes, you would own the, um, the, the the photograph itself, as you were the photographer. Uh, but I would say that you would need permission um, to to release that print. Um, from the athlete themselves. Yes, uh, Fergus Connor, often photographers are not credited for their image. Can this be built into contract for use? Yes, it absolutely can. Um, uh, all photographers should be credited for their for their work, however however the, um, they see fit. So yes, it can be into built into a contract and therefore, um, of course, if someone's gonna, uh, or a company's gonna deny that, then that would be totally up to you whether you were to continue with that partnership or not but yes absolutely it can be built in uh, yes it, it, I was uh, just speaking to my colleague Sophie before this actually started and said that a lot of when it comes to copywriters is such a uh, as we call it a spaghetti junction of the IP world um, it can be quite specific to yourselves so of course if there are anything if there's anything that um, maybe you think of <clears throat> excuse me if you think of after after this after this is finished or if you're not uh, comfortable in asking a question on here, then please do not hesitate to get in contact with us um, at the IPO, so ipo.gov.uk, um, or even at the, the business engagement team, who, who is myself and my colleagues, which is um, business.engagement at ipo.gov.uk. Um, and, and we'll be more than happy to help and take any questions that you may have. Okay, Lauren Nabbitt, I've sadly had some of my fashion images taken by sellers from Alibaba. They have edited the images and used them to sell fake items of clothing. Copying the designer I captured the images for and sold this the site along with eBay. This then crosses worldwide territory. Oof, what can I do about this? 
uh, tough one again that is lauren um of, of course you you still have rights they're your images you have to prove um they're your images uh first first and foremost um contact alibaba if you obviously proven that they're your images um contact alibaba um you know even uh, maybe worth visiting a um copyright attorney um and I'm asking them to maybe even uh, draft a letter to send on, but of course, making sure that you've got full proof that they are your images first. Um, as as with what what we find a lot is that images are slightly altered, um, just to deter from them being the original. But that 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 doesn't make a difference when it comes to copyright. They are still your images, um, even whether they've been slightly altered or not. Um, yeah i i would personally contact a copyright attorney um and go from there okay kobe westford how would you go about selling photos on site like shut to start etc would you still own the photo or once you put it up for the sale do you lose control so um of course i'll repeat as with everything as the as the photographer um you will own the up the you will own the image however there are sites as i've mentioned such as facebook and instagram so your best bet of course is to actually check um the terms and conditions before you do any before you put your image anywhere there will always be a section on ip um in all of these all of these kinds of companies such as Sh shutterstock uh, facebook instagram um ebay there's always a section on ip and in there it will state whether that photo IP will remain yours or whether they will uh, they take it as soon as it goes up. So please, as for everyone, actually, please do make sure you check those contracts before you put your images anywhere. Yes, Mick Roberts asked about Instagram as same as Facebook. Yes, it is the same as Facebook. They do own that image um, as soon as it goes. They own the copyright to that image as soon as it goes uploaded. Um, again, it's in the um, the terms and conditions that we all sign um, when we when we open an account. Okay, Stuart Perfield, I'm self-employed but get regular commissions of the PR and shows. Do I still own the copyright unless there is a written contract statement? Otherwise, yes, you do, uh, Stuart. You still own that copyright unless uh, the contract states that the moment you've um, uh, you've taken your images, uh, your photographs, that the that the um, uh, technically, the employer um, would take them um, own that IP. But if if there's nothing in the contract, um, then absolutely you would still own own the IP. Okay, Sarah. Um, so you've got a business uh, trademark, business name, logo for uh, for the last thirty years, which you registered with us at the IPO. Uh, there's a company in Italy with the same name. Are becoming huge, especially online. I suppose there's nothing you could do. Well. They won't be protected in the UK. Um, I wouldn't have thought, based on the fact that you have had that logo, you've had that business name logo for the last thirty years. Um, and yes, there is still something you can do if you believe that somebody is infringing your trademark. Um, uh, I will say, of course, any kind of challenge you make on anybody, any business, any person, um, the fees will fall directly with you. Um, so, uh, of course, we, we advise in the beginning to um, visit a trademark attorney. Uh, Sigmar is the, um, the firm, the company that we always advise, which is um, Chartered Institute of Trademark Attorneys. Um, and whenever it comes to something like that, of course, usually the first half hour to an hour uh, consultation is free. Um, so if you do visit them, it's advised that you go in um, fully loaded make sure you know everything you can ask and obviously utilize your full your free half hour hour um, when you first go to see them but yes you do still have an option there um, and also to note on trademarks yes trademarks can coexist if they are in separate fields so uh, just a quick example of that you have polo you have a polo car you have the polo mints you have the polo um, clothing range um, and they're all in completely separate um, categories, uh, uh, classes, as they are in trademarks, completely separate classes, and therefore there would be no consumer confusion. So yes, you can coexist. 
Uh, and just uh, just to note here now, everybody, uh, my colleague Emma uh, from the, my, from the business engagement team has just joined us, um, and she will be uh, joining me now in taking some of your questions. Uh, so, to, good morning and welcome to Emma. Hi everyone, I work on the business engagement team with Nick. Um, I've been at the IPO for 22 years now. So um, as a team, it's our responsibility to um, raise awareness of intellectual property and just help guide people along the process that they may wish to take and just to come up with some strategies really um, with regards to their intellectual property and protection. What about work that is A, backed up to the cloud or B, stored in the cloud? Um, in what respect um, is it still protected? Um, it doesn't matter, really matter where it's stored. Um, if you've created that work, then it is still protected by the creator. Um, I think that is what the question is asking. If we could have some clarity on that, that would be good. Um, if I move on to the next one, while we're getting some clarity on that. Um, if Instagram owns the copyright, do I lose all rights to my image? Um, you'd have to check the terms and conditions of your Instagram account. Um, but generally, with um, Facebook and Instagram and other social media, um, as soon as you sign up to um, have an account on there, um, generally you're given a, a license away. So yeah, there are certain elements within your image that you would you would have lost. Brian Gavin, um, regarding Instagram and copyright, if you delete the image or images, does that cancel copyright ownership that has passed to Instagram, uh, Facebook? No, um, no, it does not. Unfortunately, um, once it's uploaded, the the, the copyright, um, as stated in the terms and conditions, are owned by the social media company. Um, so it does not cancel uh, the copyright ownership, yeah, as would be the same um, if you deleted a f your own photo from, you know, from anywhere really, you, you wouldn't lose your copyright and therefore um, neither do the social media companies, I'm afraid. Uh, okay, so um, Kobe Westwood has just come in and asked what's the best way to retain copyright while using um, social media. Um, as I said um, pre earlier on, if you are going to put your images onto social media, well, uh, actually saying that, we advise that potentially if you can maybe set up a website um, for your images where your images can be uh, stored and then you can put a link on your social media um, on, on, on your status to to link. So people can go into the link and go to your photos so therefore you are not directly putting photos onto um, the social media platform and therefore they wouldn't own those images. Uh, of course again please do make sure you read the terms and conditions um, because of course all companies can potentially be different um, it's not one size fits all, so make sure you read those terms and conditions before you put your images anywhere, really. Um, and making sure that you know if you are putting your images on, who owns the IP, um, and therefore safeguarding yourself. Yeah, so... Do, just to, to add on there to what Emma was saying, Emma's, I know Emma's worked in the IPO a bit longer than myself. I've been there um, for seven years now um, and just only in the uh, business engagement team for nearly three years now. And generally speaking, if when the world is normal, if we can call it normal, uh, we would be traveling uh, the breadth and width of the UK, um, delivering talks around IP um, and helping businesses, uh, people, um with everything um entailed with ip how to protect yourselves how to go forward what you can and can't do um and, and god willing we will be uh, back to that sometime soon um because the four walls drive me insane uh however um 
these are the kind of shows, especially with a photography show, um, it's a great show, and we, and we visit, we go, we attend every year, um, and uh, hopefully we'll, we will be there in person next year. Um, there's another question in the, the question box. Um, is there an option to refuse to sign the Instagram IP? Um, I don't think so. It's part of the terms and conditions of signing up to an Instagram account. So if you do want to use Instagram um, for your business, then unfortunately the, the material that you are putting on your Instagram account, unfortunately, um, you will be given a, a license to, to them. Um, so like Nick said, um, probably the, the best way of doing it is to use Instagram as a platform, but then redirect um, people to your um, personal websites. Yeah, and um, leading on from the backup of the cloud question, um, I'm now reading the terms for Black Blaze Backup, also looking for term for Apple iCloud. Look at it both to see if they wrestle ownership from the originator for the photographers, for the photographs, sorry. Um, I guess you'd need to look at the terms and conditions of, of that contract um, and, and look at whether within those terms and conditions you're giving your IP rights away. Um, couldn't really answer that in a general sense, sorry. Uh, John Ping, um, unfortunately uh, not. Um, it's just a really frustrating part of intellectual property. Um, if you've got a piece of work and you want to share that piece of work, um, you really need to have a good contract in place um, with all the terms and conditions that are specific to your piece of work. So if you have a catalogue of photographs and you want to give a licence out to those photographs, um, that is something that you can have to be specific over um, in your contract. So the advice really is to speak to a lawyer and, and get the, the right contract drawn up. Um, so, yeah, so Brian, do social media platforms own everything, including your captions, as that can sometimes be part of just some brand. I'm going to, I don't believe they do. But, uh, but again, um, adding on to what Emma have said, of course, is you need to check those terms and conditions. Um, as I said previously, there is a section um, around IP in 99.9% .9 of terms and conditions uh, and what it will be in there. If, if, it, it, if, if that is the case, it will be written in those terms and conditions. So it's always best to check and you can even go back and check now um, on anything you are signed up to just to be um, sure and clear about uh, who owns what. Um, so we will um, just wrap it up there now actually uh, and thanks very much for all your questions and I hope we've been able to answer them um, um, that gives you everything you need. As I, um, I said a little bit earlier, if you have any other questions you've got beyond this, um, please do not hesitate to get in contact with us at the IPO. Um, as I said, ipo.gov.uk. We have an info centre that's open um, Monday to Friday, 9 till 5. Uh, and I will find you that number before I leave this call. Um, also, the um the business engagement team we take the emails directly to us regarding any questions um around ip as well so also we can be found on social media platforms uh, uh we have an instagram uh facebook um linkedin and twitter so if you contact the office it is on number 0300 300 2000 um, and uh, yeah, and if there's, as so I said, if there's anything else beyond this, then please don't hesitate to get in touch.
but um, thanks very much for, uh, for joining us all today. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks all.